So we're now at an exciting stage in in human history where we uh, are developing drugs that are in clinical trials in in places around the world uh, to see if we can mimic the benefits of dieting and exercise and, and beyond um, to d- delay and treat diseases of aging. Now, this relates to, a- uh, to space travel because we now believe we understand how to boost the body's defenses in general, and that includes defenses against radiation uh, caused DNA damage, which is, as you know, a, uh, a real problem out in space. And so what we did was we we just published a science paper and showed that by manipulating these genetic pathways, we could increase, at least in mice, their protection against DNA damage and, in fact, take an old mouse and make it young again with regards to how, how their tissues can survive um, things like DNA damage. And so we proposed to NASA that we could, instead of shield the spacecraft with lead or in meters of water to block the, the cosmic radiation, we could instead give a little pill every morning to the astronauts on their way to Mars, and that would be even more effective at preventing the DNA damage that is undoubtedly going to happen. In our ninth newsletter, we shared some news on space travel to the International Space Station, scheduled for next year. We also talked about a recent NASA study on discovering the surprising key to astronaut health in space. Space travel seems to accelerate aging, and so NASA is trying to find a solution. Dr. David Sinclair is working with NASA on the issue, which he mentioned in a couple of podcasts we listened to, although there is not much information about it. So we decided to investigate and let you know what we found. NASA iTech is an organization that identifies and searches for cutting-edge technology being developed outside of NASA that solves problems here on Earth, but also has the potential to address the challenges facing the exploration of the Moon and Mars. In December 2016, Dr. David Sinclair teamed up with Dr. Lindsay Wu of the University of New South Wales to win NASA's iTech competition. The pair of scientists' biological solution beat out the creation of 300 others in the competition. The proposal was to use NAD-boosting molecules as a potential treatment in cosmic radiation exposure during space missions. The NAD-boosting molecule they suggested was nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. According to Dr. Wu, as well as helping astronauts, NMN could protect frequent flyers from the effects of radiation on passenger jets and combat the accelerated aging seen in childhood cancer survivors. There is another NASA NMN experiment ongoing in Harvard College Medical School, according to the NASA taskbook. The research title is Nicotinamide Dinucleotide Boosting Strategy to Mitigate Musculoskeletal Loss During Space Exploration. This is the principal investigator, Dr. Tian Xiao, and the co-investigator is Dr. Sinclair. The issue is that, just like when you're getting old, there is muscle loss in space. The idea is that by keeping NAD plus levels high to activate CERT1, the muscle loss could be alleviated. The object of the research is to determine the ability of NMN to mitigate unloading-induced musculoskeletal loss, and secondly, to determine if NMN improves the effectiveness of exercise during unloading. As mentioned, muscle loss does not only happen in spaceflight, but there are also causes such as old age and during cancer. The hope is that the same research can be applied to these two. In the 2020 update, the team described the experiments that they had done so far and the results from them. They were using mice and suspended them so that their hind legs were off the ground. They had six groups, three of which were walking as normal and three of which were suspended. For each three groups, they either gave them plain water or water with 400 milligrams per kilogram per day of NMN or 800 milligrams per kilogram per day of NMN. They saw that the 400 milligram group did reduce muscle loss, though it seemed that the 800 milligram group did not make any difference, implying that it was beyond their beneficial dose. This research is still ongoing and there is no final conclusion at this point. As mentioned in the video clip from Dr. Sinclair, another major issue with space travel is the level of radiation from Galactic Cosmic Radiation, or GCR. This is a report from another study being conducted by Boston University 
which looks at the effect on cognition in mice of simulated GCR. In their tests, they saw that NMN working as an NAD booster showed promise for radio protection. The objective of the experiment was to define behavioral responses for mice and test the neuroprotective capacity of NMN. They treated 48 mice with NMN and then exposed 24 of them to GCR for 24 days. They assessed the learning and memory, anxiety and motility, and dominance and aggression. In the results, they saw that learning and memory and anxiety and motility were unaffected. However, irradiated mice were more aggressive and dominant, and it was found that NMN did reduce this effect by 90%. In the conclusion, the authors note, noted that mice did not suffer from neurological impairment from GCR, but dominance did seem to be affected, and that NMN showed potential as a radioprotective agent. Recently, there are new space biology experiments in NASA space station on orbit. The experiment topics include heart health and muscle atrophy. The lack of gravity aboard the space station means astronauts use less energy when moving around the orbiting lab, resulting in muscle atrophy. The experiment will target both rodents and humans. We shall see whether they are using CoQ10, a strong candidate in the NASA research paper we discussed, or NMN for the muscle atrophy. We'll give you an update later. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.